Just gotta keep going hard. That's all. That's all. Oh boy. You're stronger than you look. It seems you're a skilled fighter and a persona user as well. With that, Kurijo Sun stands up. To clear something up. Before our battle, I may have said or done some things that seem disrespectful, but I understand. We were shown illusions to goad us into fighting each other. So you already knew. You are a credit to the Shiragami Moon. In that case, I'll. Well, I'm willing to forget all the things you said about my body. What? Oh. Uh. Okay. Wait, what? Her body? What did the illusionary me say? Though, if you're a Persona user, that gives weight to two of my theories. Future Sun looks straight at me. Is that you were one of those who solved last year's serial murders. A few proud anonymous heroes. I shrug, and then I brace myself for the other shoe to drop. I know what she's about to say. Is that you were one of my enemies. You were an observer at the hijacking, which means a Persona user was sent specifically. Yet you hid that from me. Somehow I doubt you were there just to watch over the cargo. <sighs> if my suspicions aren't off base, then there's something I must say. In all honesty, I feel I have no defense for what's going to happen next. I begin to try to find a way to make it through this conversation without ruining whatever goodwill I may still have with her. But your son's next words take me completely by surprise. Johnny, can I ask for your cooperation once again? What? You know more about this world than I do. And since I lost our match, I will be unable to move on from here. Wait a moment. I thought you distrusted me. Even if I did, is continuing to oppose each other the wisest course of action? I have no words. Here just sun smiles as she watches me. The proposal completely surprised me. My surprise must have confirmed what she was thinking about me. She knew that I'm not the type of person who would become her enemy under normal circumstances. That's why she smiled. I am no match for her. She's on a completely different level than I am. It's not a matter of social rank, she simply has the type of personality that makes people want to follow her. Kuyuja-san doesn't wait for me to answer and continues. We are here in pursuit of the stolen cargo. Upon investigation, we figured out that it contained the fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon, Labrys. She was a machine, developed as one of a series of test models. They were intended to receive personas in order to combat shadows. Isn't a persona the manifestation of one's strength of heart? How could a machine be capable of using a persona? You're right to ask that. Labrys has a mind of her own. We don't know what she looks like, but it's probably very close to human. A humanoid machine. I did see something fitting that description before I came through the, to the TV world. So that was a weapon developed by the Creator Group. A humanoid robot. One with a heart at that. This is the fruits of creature technology created from this research of shadows. I cannot help but be surprised. However, if the culprits were specific specifically after this Labrys weapon, there's a high probability that it has been removed from this case and is mobile. I cannot fathom how that, how that would benefit the thieves. There's one thing I can deduce the though. time of the robbery, we began to see activity in this world as well. I doubt this is a coincidence. I feel sure that your Labrys is connected to this ridiculous tournament. I agree. Before I know what I'm doing, I reach out to shake hands with Kurijo Sun. I your earlier proposal. And I think I'd best hurry. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Your friends must be facing their own troubles. It's possible that they've met Labrys without knowing it, too. They'll be alright, I'm sure. The records showed that Labrys had some unknown experimental equipment. We don't know what she's capable of. Don't take her lightly. Oh, no. That isn't what I meant. She has a heart, yes? Then fighting her isn't our only option. She can be saved. I'm sure the others will reach the same conclusion. I see. When I say that, I can see a smile on her face. I can tell she believes in her friends as well. Yes, I meant to ask, have you been able to contact your friends? I no. shake my head. Two of them have analysis-capable personas, but both of them have gone missing. I actually have a few powers in that area myself. Can you tell me what these friends of yours look like? I give her a detailed description. I give her... Oh, I give her ad... I, I fucking missed the as in between her eyes there. I give her as detailed descriptions of Rize, Sun, and Teddy as I can. A bear costume and a girl. Are they... Rize should have been easy. You know Rize, Rize Kujikawa? Yeah, yeah, Rize Kujikawa. And a dude in a bear costume, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's it. Yes. 
They're the ones acting as hosts for this tournament. But they're not usually like this. I see. Well, anyway, knowing that will make searching for them easier. Let me see. Huge sun focuses and closes her eyes. Her power must allow her to see an image as she searches. Maybe only a few powers, but it's still quite amazing. I match some ways from here. It's not moving either. Aha! I found her. <gasps> Can you hear me? Huh? Who is this? Who is this? That My voice name is Mitsuru Kirijo. I'm with one of your friends, Shiragane. Kirijo's son looks at me and nods. She's communicated to me so that Rize can now hear my voice as well. Naoto-kun, is it really you? Yes, though I could ask the same of you, Rize-san. I'm so glad. This weird fake teddy kidnapped me and then everyone was fighting each other and... So Rize-san's voice in the PA system was a fake. That being the case, then there's no reason to believe that the image of Teddy and the miners is a real thing oh, either. Mike, please calm down. Do you know where you are right now? It looks like an announcement room, but there are these invisible walls stopping me from leaving. Plus, the fake Teddy is watching me, so I can't use my persona. I don't know who that fake Teddy is, but it seems that Rizei's son and the real Teddy were kidnapped to deprive us of any me of a means of communication. In other words, to keep us fooled while we were in this world. Then again, that explains nothing about whatever objective could be gained by doing this to us. How does Labrys' existence tie into this? Um, thanks. Kirijo-san, right? Wait, Kirijo? I know that name. Well, it's not important now. Are you a Persona user too? Yes, but we can discuss that later. I sense a shadow-like presence very close to your position. Are you all right? The only thing near here is the fake Teddy. Wait, is that what you're talking about? So it's a shadow. I was hesitant to make a decision. Kirijo-san does not know Teddy. Of course she wouldn't know his origins. Even if the general was the real Teddy, she would probably think of him as a shadow if she didn't know any better. But if the general is merely something else that's taking on his appearance, it leads to a completely different conclusion. That is, it's a shadow from a new normal human who doesn't have any tolerance for this world. But if that's the case, then why is the shadow mimicking Teddy? I don't have enough pieces to begin solving this puzzle yet. While I'm in the process of thinking things through, Kirijo's son speaks up. Shiragana, you need to hurry on. I'll try to maintain communication as best I can and keep you in the loop. All right then, I'm off. Stay safe. I nod back to her and start running. Onward. To the announcement room, where Rize's son is being held. Uh, yes, let's uh, go save Rize. We have one more fight. I'm assuming probably against Ike or Teddy. That'd be my guess. Oh, we're in the classroom. Probably Teddy. As I hurry on, led by the invisible walls, I reach the classroom. I'll be focused into another fight here too, no doubt. Looks like you're chugging right along. And now, another special guest for you. See, he says special guest, but it could still be either I, I guess or Teddy. may be off putting you up against this one, so I want to see your best moves out there, Nachan. Oh, I hope it's not, I guess. Now, bring out the next opponent! Oh, it's Akihiko. All right. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. It's another rushdown character. Fuck! I see a silhouette framed in the spotlight. It's oh, how could I forget that attire? Akihiko Sonata, as I recall. Interesting. I've been gone for a while, and here I meet a stranger who knows who I am. You're a member of Mitsuru Kirijo's organization. Her friend, actually, no? Oh, I see. So it's really Mitsuru you're interested in, Ace Detective. No, nope, he's under illusion too, even though we never met. Ah, okay. His words caused me to tense up. He just called me his detective. Perhaps I was just a guest from my family name, Shiragane, but he could know that I'm spying on them for the police. I carefully search his eyes for anything that might tell me how much he knows. He looks me over from head to toe, and immediately sneers mockingly. Look at you. You have the physique of a 12-year-old. What? A detective needs a strong body more than a strong brain. All-night research sessions, long stakeouts, you need stamina for that. But look at those twiggy arms and legs of yours. You've got an overdeveloped chest, but from the looks of it, I'd say it's all fat and no muscle. Seriously. Oh! There's another joke about now to having the biggest booze out of everybody. What? What is wrong with him? That's a part of my self image I'm most sensitive about. The secret to bodybuilding. First thing, protein. Second thing, protein. Third, fourth, and fifth, 
more protein. I think you need a little bit more than that, Akiko, but uh, I mean, protein is important, but uh, I think you need more than that. Don't you think that's rather unbalanced? <laughs> so now the sun flexes his muscle like a bodybuilder. You gotta spar. One, two. He said sparring, but that punch was meant to do serious damage. This is absurd. No matter what he says, his fists are definitely real. Shoot, I can't dodge them at all. Mitsuru? So now son stops suddenly as a familiar voice echoes through the room. Under the effects of an illusion. Shiragane has done nothing. Do not attack. What do you mean? He's the one who attacked me all of a sudden. I attacked. Suddenly I remember. That's right, this is all an illusion. I've never met Sonata-san before, so I didn't know what his usual self is supposed to be like. On top of that, I allowed the first thing he said to get under my skin. How stupid of me, I let myself get swept up in the situation and failed to realize what was really happening. Perspective, it was you who dealt the first blow. We were both being shown an illusion to make us fight each other. Shiragane is an excellent detective and a persona user. I told him everything. He's agreed to cooperate with us. Oh, they don't actually realize uh, Naoto's a girl. Oh. Huh. I thought I thought that was like her storyline was that she was more open about like revealing that. Okay. He was originally on the scene as a police observer in this case, so we've already met. Here, just and I explained to Sonata son what has been happening up until now. It's a relief to learn that, despite his appearance, he's actually quite a reasonable man and quick to pick up on things. Like phenomenon that bogs your senses is already gone. You should be able to communicate normally now. What the fuck? Oh, 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 I guess because because they traded blows and they're like, oh, well, okay, we're done. We introduce ourselves and shake hands. It's like I fell for a cheap trick. I'm sorry for forgetting myself, too. I can't even claim to have been unaware of the deception. So you're a persona user, huh? Well, since fate already brought us together, want to test your skills before you move on? Wow, Akihiko. Like, yeah, well, we're here, so might as well. Let's see what happens. Oh, God. So now Sun slams his fist together. Hiko, you're doing it again. Just cooperate with him. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, Naoto. Let's go. Well, they're not. Neither of them are going to be able to go because they haven't fought yet. Wait, the tournament rules say. As Sun so walks away, he hits the wall. As I figured, he hit the wall. What's the matter? What happened? I don't know. There's some kind of invisible wall here. The rules dictate that only the winner of each match can advance. So, uh... He was flustered mere seconds ago, but now Sun's, Sonata Sun is taking on a more lively expression. He just wants to fucking go. We need to have a match, even though we've got nothing against each other. <laughs> it's like, yeah! We get to spar! After all, then, huh? All right, then. Come at me. Please go easy on me. <laughs> I can always hear Creature Sun's side exasperation. Uh Oh boy. That was an interesting that was an interesting way to get to the fight. <laughs> Just like, hey, I'm gonna beat you up for real. Well while well, well, we're here, why don't we spar? Hey look, we're actually gonna fight! Uh I almost got- Oh, shit! Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Cancel. Ah, oh, fuck! I thought that was gonna hit. Oh! Oh, I didn't get to set it. Fuck! Oh, you know what? I have a fucking counter. What am I doing? Look at that! Man! Oh, I forgot I had a counter. Oops. Oh, man. I escaped that. That would have sucked. There. This should be... Oh, I don't know if it's going to be death. Nope. Oh! See? That's what I was talking about. You got the wave thing! Ah! Oh. Man. Fuck. I did all fights with a, without remembering that Naoto has a fucking counter against god damn it oh wow that could have made so many other fights so much easier
God damn it. Fuck. I wish I remembered that. That would have been good. That was a great bout. You're good. Oh well. A bout? What an annoying rule. <laughs> Wait a second. That reminds me. I saw that guy calling himself General walking with a girl. If only one person can move on, that's against the rules. The fake Teddy and Rize's son were together all this time. And could the girl he's talking about be Rize's son? No. Remember the details of what this girl looked like? Sana san tells me about the girl he'd seen. What he matches, what he said matches the description of the unknown girl Kanji Kun had talked about. Which means that there's a high probability the person seen walking with her was not the general, but the real Teddy. At the very least, this is evidence against the argument that Teddy is the general. This creates another theory, though. If the general is not really Teddy, then he's someone's shadow. There's only one person that fits the bill. Well, not person, per se, but... was Lavarus, then... Well, is it possible we're dealing with her shadow? That's right, Lavarus. If she had a heart capable of using a persona, then it stands to reason that she could create a shadow. In light of how the events of last year played out, it makes perfect sense. She was kidnapped by someone who threw her into the TV world, creating a reflection of her heart. None of the data I have shows any connection between Lavarus and Yasagami High. On top of which, I don't see how she'd know about you or your friends. I've been having doubts about that as well, but at least I have a feeling about what's going on. What Labrys' kidnappers hope to gain from this remains unknown, however. At any rate, it wouldn't be good if the Shadow were to run into his its owner. Either way, it's best if I hurry head to the announcer room. It's much more logical to restrain the false Teddy since I know his location than it would be to have to search for Labrys somewhere in this world. Still, that's really is Teddy with Labrys. Why are they traveling together? What is that Teddy doing? I'm sorry I can't help much, Kirijo-san. You'll have to forgive me for my meager skills as well. My persona's communication powers are more for operational assistance. A friend of mine from school was much stronger than myself in that respect, but... Ah, uh, Fuka. Oh, no, uh, I love you. stupid bear's fault anyway. He's a real genius for making people worry. Man, it's strange running into so many Persona users I've never heard of all at once. <laughs> I gotta say, it brings back memories. For us, too. We were as surprised as you. Not to say that the possibility of other Persona users hadn't crossed our minds, but to actually meet them. What you said about a friend from school kind of reminds me of us, too. What was school like for you? I'd like to hear about it. Uh... Well, ignoring Akihiko's current appearance, he was a boxing champion in his student days. Oh, Mitsuru hates his experience. Ah, oh, that's awesome. She fucking despises what he looks like. He just wants to be, like, the best. So he's dressing like he's the best. That's fucking awesome. Hey, that dig was uncalled for. Uh, <laughs> After that, I don't know what went through his brain, but he started saying he wanted to search for stronger opponents. He went on a journey to hone his skills? I thought that only happened in comics and old samurai films. I thought I had to do it, so I did it. That's all. This peaceful moment was shattered by Kurijo's son's voice. What's this I'm sensing? It's like a shadow, but bigger. Another shadow presence? And isn't that the fa- isn't? And it isn't the false teddy? There we go. What's going on? That big teddy left the announcement room. Where's his son? That was weird, like, oh, the shocked expressions would go back, but it's really their neutral faces. Rize san made a report immediately after that. Sana san and I look at each other. Looks like the situation is changing. Sana san nods to me, nods, 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 and after taking a small bow, I run off. With no one watching over her anymore, Rize san was able to summon her persona. The job of providing support moved from Kurijo san, who not at all, not all of us knew, to Rize san. Rize-san contacted the rest of us and let us talk to each other for a moment. Rize-chan? Oh, thank God you're safe! Don't worry, the others are here too. We'll rescue you in no time. Wait, why is Naoto here? I can't help but smile at this as I tell them about the others I'd seen so far. Seems we're all safe for now. And now that we can communicate, we've greatly increased our awareness of the situation and our ability to share information. The general must have known that Rize leaving Rize-san alone would result in this. If he did... If he did know, but left her anyway, there must have been something major happening. Either that, or he no longer has any reason to hide. I hurry on while we share what we know. The actual design of this place may differ from the real Yasugami High School, but the general layout appears to be the same. 
Then, if I climb the stairs and turn the corner, the next room should be right there. However, Rizu-san calls out a warning before I can get up there. The fake Teddy's back. I'm too late. Huh? What the? Is that the real Teddy? Hey, the real Teddy's here too. He's got some girl with him. I don't know her. The fact that Rizu's communication didn't get cut off once General Teddy reappeared is somewhat worrisome. But then again, General Teddy doesn't have the time to bother watching Rizu-san. After all, if the real Teddy and Labrys are both right there as well, he has more important things to be concerned about. This confirms that General Teddy is a fake. It is only natural then to assume that he is Labrys' shadow in disguise. However, that makes things dangerous. Labrys and her shadow are confronting each other. Rizu's son should know the dangers of the situation, but she doesn't know Labrys. She might not realize what the relationship is between the girl and the shadow. I have to warn her. But before I can speak, it happened. The static gets worse. Why can't I communicate with her when we're so close? There's something happening in the announcement room. I run as fast as I can towards it. As I reach the door, I hear a loud scream from inside. Oh, man. Uh, now I'll tell with her fucking... She's all set up. I slammed the door open without a second thought and prepared for a fight. The attack came from unexpected assailant. If anyone in that room, I wouldn't have thought it would be... Teddy? Ooh... Oh, to be continued. What the hell? The unexpected assailant, probably I guess, or someone. All right. Place exists between dreams. All right. Well, now I only have the Persona Three characters left to hit reach the cliffhanger with. Why don't you? I don't know who I'm gonna go with first. Maybe I guess. Even though Akihiko's the best, Masuru's also the best. Mitsuru's gonna be really long too. That's the thing though, because she's gonna go through that whole plane sequence again, and then a little bit extra. Where I'm thinking only Igis and Akihiko will probably just start from like Mitsuru coming up to them and going, Yeah, we got shit to do. So this could get a bit interesting. I don't know who I'm gonna do next. I'm thinking maybe Igis. Just because that's. It would make a nice round wheel without the, the little silver, silver medals I have for everybody. Or maybe Akihiko. One of those two, I think. I don't want to get into Mitsuru's right away. So. Yeah! That's gonna be exciting! Woo! I gotta do Akihiko. Because I fucking love Akihiko. It's the best. Or I guess. I don't know. I'll make up my mind. What menu do we have? Not the Persona 3 menu. Because that's what happened when I booted up the game. So there's a very low chance of getting that. Ah, it's the support characters. Well, kind of. It's the sunset. That's cool. Alright, well, that's another story. Cliffhanger for uh Persona 4 Arena. It took a long ass time, because holy shit, her fucking story took a long time to get going. That's fine, not a big deal. Fights were uh were really bad too. I apologize again. I will try to actually learn her for the next time I have to play with her. And we'll see. So uh, with that, check the description for linking links to the other places, and I'll talk to you guys later. This is Gargamish saying, 